Previously, I did a video about the worst camera I'd ever owned. That's the camera this video is being recorded on, the GoPro 9. Let's just hope it doesn't freeze up before the end of the video. Today, I'm going to do another video about the best camera I've ever owned, the Canon EOS M6 Mark II. I don't usually do videos about digital cameras because they don't normally stay relevant for very long. These old film cameras stay relevant for years. You know, this one's 40 years old and people are still interested. But with digital cameras, new ones come out so frequently. And once a new model comes out, then people aren't generally interested in the old model. But this is such a great camera and it's about two and a half years old now that I've decided to do this video. I'll just give you a, a quick sort of history of my camera background. So in 1981, it was a, a Canon A1 film camera and I upgraded to a, a Canon C90. Um, in 2000, I got a very early um, Sony digital camera, just a point and shoot as a present and use that for a while. In 2004, I bought my first a digital SLR, it was a Canon 10D, then I moved up to this one, a Canon 40D. In 2013, I moved to an EOS M. Uh, 2017, I got an EOS M6, and I've just upgraded to the EOS M6 Mark II. The problem for me with these DSLRs is that they just became too heavy and clunky and big. I live in Thailand where it's very hot and humid all year round. And when you're carrying around one of these, plus additional lenses and flashes, it, it, the, my backpack started to get so heavy, it, it got me down. I remember times I was you know, wandering around with all this camera gear, sat down for a drink and a rest, and then I just didn't want to get up again and, and carry the bag again. And when kids came along in 2011, that, that was it. That was the final straw. We had all the, the baby paraphernalia to carry around. It was just too much to carry all this gear. So I moved to EOS M. The reason being the, you know, the very small form factor and lightweight. And inside here, you've got the same size sensor as this one, APS-C. It's actually got more pixels. It's a, a better sensor. The problem with the EOS M, it was um, very, very slow, you know. And at first it, it was, or, well some people said it was unusable. I, I, could, I could use it, but the, the autofocus was very, very slow. Canon brought out a firmware update, which improved it quite a lot, but it was still very, very slow. Then Canon brought out an, an M2, which I think was just for the Asian market, then, a, then an M3. And they were better aesthetically. You had more buttons and dials on the outside, but the inside was still the same. It's still very, very slow. And when the M5 and M6 came along, that was a massive update. You know, it was a, you know, huge. The, the M6 was nothing like the EOS M. It was a, a really nice camera. And I, I was happy with that for a long time. So I got it in 2017. And when the Mark II came out, I wasn't in any great hurry to get an M a Mark II because the N6 was still doing a good job for me. Um, quite recently, I decided that you know, it probably was time to make another up upgrade, so I went for the Mark II. I wasn't expecting a huge upgrade, and I've been quite surprised so far how much better this Mark II is uh, compared to the original M6. This camera is about two and a half years old now and there have been loads of videos and I'm not going to go through all the specs because that's already been done you know, a thousand times and there's lots of information on the internet. I'll just talk to you about the, the sort of initial impression that I've had since using the camera. Um, firstly, it's a bit heavier, a uh, bit chunkier, a bit bigger than the original. And compared to the original EOS M, it's, it's quite a bit bigger, but it's, it's, a, it's a nice size now. The, the, the original EOS M, although I went for this because of its small form factor and its lightweight, it's really a bit too small and a bit too slippery. And now this is almost perfect. This, this grip on the front has been extended compared to the EOS M6. It's got a nice little rubbery coating that's not slippery 
and it just feels perfect. Um, the other thing I like, and that they made a big improvement with the M6 over the original M in adding some additional dials and buttons and things. With the M, whatever you wanted to do, you had to go through the menu, and that was just clumsy, and it took a long time, and it just wasn't ideal. And they improved that with the M6, and they've done an even better job with the M6 Mark II. And all these, all these buttons are customizable, and there's a lot of customization. So whatever your style of shooting, you can set the camera up just how you want, and this is gonna be different for everyone. And so it's really flexible, so you can set it how you want it, not how another person wants it. So for example, um, with the autofocus, if I'm taking mainly um, subjects of, not still subjects, and I'm using one shot AF, and then suddenly something comes towards me, and it, I want to track it and keep it in focus, I want servo AF, I've just um, set this back button here, to switch between servo AF and one shot AF, you know, and that, that sort of thing is perfect. And it's the same with the other, the other dolls. The things that I, I regularly change, I set up so I can change them very, very quickly. I just love that customization aspect. There are a lot more AF points. They're smaller and they're more accurate. And I really love the IAF that this one's got and the previous models haven't. Um, it's well known the fact that when you're shooting portraits, it, it doesn't matter what's out of focus, but the eyes must be in focus. You know, if they're not, it just ruins the portrait. And that works really well, and that's a, a great feature that I'm really enjoying using. There's a new mode, which well, is new to me anyway, called Flexible Priority Auto Exposure. And it just makes so much sense. Um, exposure is a triangle. You know, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Um, in previous digital, digital cameras, it's just followed the model for film cameras. So you, you, you can just sort of jiggle around with the aperture and shutter speed, and ISO is over here somewhere, sort of outside. What the, the flexible mode does, it puts all three on the same screen. So when you, when you go into flexible mode, you see ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. They're all on auto, so you can just shoot like that. Or you, you can adjust any one, um, depending on the type of effect that you want. So I, I find that a really useful little feature. The features I've mentioned so far, sort of nice, to, nice to haves. The thing that really blew me away um, was when I took this out to take some shots of my son playing football. And the speed and responsiveness of this thing is amazing. I just couldn't believe it. Uh, the frame rate is like 14 frames per second. And it just feels so lively in your hand. Um, it reminded me of when I moved from a, a Canon A1, an old film camera, to a Canon C90. And this thing was a bit of a laggard. And this thing just feels so lively. You know, you, you can shoot a shoot off a roll of 36 exposures in no time at all. And it felt exactly the same moving from the M6 to the, the um, Mark II. Um, this didn't feel particularly fast. This, this feels blazing fast. And previously, the EOS M line I've always seen as a compromise. You know, you, you can, if you want Great autofocus speed, great uh, frame rate, and in an APS camera, you needed to go out and buy a, a Canon 7D or something. If you wanted small size and, uh, and low weight, you know you could go for EOS M, but you you couldn't have both. You know, uh, I have a saying in life: you can have anything, you can't have everything. Well, that's changed with the with the M6 Mark II because it's still got the very small form factor and the lightweight but it's also blazing fast. So, you know, I, I see in this a camera that I can use for everything and I can use for a very long time in the future without any needs to change it. it, it it's just re really, the um, f first impressions of this camera have just blown me away. The Mark II has got the same time-lapse feature that the original M6 had. 
It's also got a focus bracketing feature, which is really nice. Now, I did a video of this um, last week, and it's got very few views. No one seems to be interested. But for me, it's a really nice feature. You know, if, you, if you're shooting macro, then you have a problem with a very narrow depth of field. And uh, one way of getting around that is to, is to take multiple shots at different focus points and then use some focus stacking software to put those together to get you know, one shot with a, a big de uh, depth of field. Uh, in the past, I, I've done this um, using manual focus. So, you know, so you, you, take, you take one picture and then adjust the lens slightly, take another one, adjust the lens a bit more, take another one. It's very time consuming. And if you're trying to shoot an insect, you know, there's no guarantee the insect's gonna wait around while you mess around with your manual focusing. And you can just set up the camera to, to do this automatically. It will take however many shots you want uh, and it will increment the, the focus between each shot. So that, that's really nice as well. With regard to video, um, a, a big thing for a lot of people is it shoots in 4K, well, this one doesn't, and it doesn't crop. Uh, some other Canon cameras have 4K, but when you, when you put them in 4K, it crops the image, this one doesn't. I'm, I'm not really into 4K. Um, I, I don't really see the need for it, and if, if I were to start shooting in 4K, I would need to make some very big hardware and software upgrades, and that'd be quite expensive as well. So at the moment, I'm just happy uh, to shoot in 1080p. Uh, the image stabilization is also very nice. Um, it's got, for video, it's got like in-body um, five-axis stabilization. And the EOS M had that as well, but this, the M6 Mark II has got an en enhanced mode, so it stabilizes even better. And that was actually the, the reason for me buying the GoPro. Um, I, I didn't want to use a gimbal. I just wanted to carry the camera. And I saw some videos of the GoPro and I was very impressed with the uh, HyperSmooth. And it, it seems as if I could buy like a very, a very small, compact, light camera that had um, great image stabilization built in. Um, th that was the theory. In, in practice, the, the GoPro has given me lots of other problems. You know, it just keeps freezing up for no reason. It has card writing problems. And it got to the point where I just, I couldn't trust it anymore. And um, really, when I bought the GoPro, I should have just gone out and bought one at EOS M6, but I didn't realize that it had this enhanced image stabilization mode, which is uh, really nice and seems to work very well. With all my cameras, you'll see a bit of a, a Canon theme going on. And you might think to yourself, well, you know, it's just like a Canon fanboy, which is why he bought an M6. But that's, that's not really the case. Um, I, I describe a fanboy as someone who sort of waits outside the Apple store all night, sleeps on the pavement to get the, the latest Apple products without knowing anything about it. I'm, I'm not like that. I'll, I'll get uh, the, the equipment that does the, the best job for me. And with Canon, you know, going back to 1981, it, the products just do the job. And they, they don't go wrong. And I never had any problems with my Canon film cameras. I got uh, the Sony point and shoot digital camera in 2000, uh, and that was a troublesome camera. You know, the, the rechargeable battery was, um, was troublesome. Uh, the camera went wrong. It was just a poor camera. Uh, I got the, the GoPro last year, that was not another poor camera, lots and lots of problems. Uh, just recently, so I'm, I've started to get back into macro photography, I bought a, a Yong Nuo ring flash. And I, I bought Yong, Yong Nuo because it was about a, a fifth of the price of the, of the Canon ring flash. You know, I knew that the Canon wouldn't be any problems, but I thought I'd try and save some money. I got it out of the box, went to try it, and it only, it only flashed some of the time. You know, the, uh, you, you can see the, the, the light had come on to show that it had recycled okay. It was ready to flash. You, you press the shutter button and the flash didn't fire. Um, with Canon, that, that sort of thing doesn't happen. You know, you, you buy a Canon product, you know it's going to work. So that's why I, that's why I stick to Canon. And um, you may think, oh, I'm a bit of a fanboy in recommending the EOS M6, but that's not the reason. 
it's just that with every Canon product I've had, they've worked really, really well, uh, totally reliable, no problems. And apart from the reliability, this one's got great functionality and great speed as well. So it's a camera that I'm very, very happy to recommend, even now when it's two and a half years old. If you have any comments, questions, or other feedback, please leave them below, and there'll be more videos soon. So thank you for watching.